Dirtle Magic. Hello and welcome back. You can follow our post on Twitter and Facebook at DirtleMTG to stay up to date on our latest videos and other posts, and you can join a more robust discussion about casual commander at our blog, thedicebag.blog. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this content to help the channel and the blog grow. Another way you can support the channel, though, is through our affiliate links in the description below. If you're looking for single sealed product or gaming accessories to protect all of that glory, please consider clicking the links into the description. Now, grab some spells. It's time to dirtle. These here are some mean streets, and you have to know how to take care of yourself. Mr. Orville here can teach you the basics. The smell of fresh meat, though, might bring out some unsavory characters. Like those people over there, Lenore, Wingrace, and Ural. Let's see how Mr. Orfeo might handle them jerks. Alright, back to the normal voice. Ural wins the die roll and puts down a stomping ground. I drop a swamp. Lenore has Flagstones of Trocare hit the field. Wingrace plays a Taiga on their turn. Back to Ural, and they have Plateau onto the table. Sithis Harvest Hand then enters. I draw a Farseek, and drop a Woodland Cemetery. I cast the Farseek, and I grab my own Stomping Ground, and it hits the field. Lenore has Karn's Bastion into play. Luminarch Aspirant is then cast, and once in play, gains a 1-1 counter. Karn's Bastion also comes into play for the Lord Wingrace player. A Mana Crypt comes down, and is used along with the Taiga to cast to Cultivate. They have a swamp come into play tapped, and a land to their hand. A forest lands on the field for Ural. They cast Instill Energy, enchanting Sithis. Naturalize is then cast, destroying the Mana Crypt over on Wingrace's field. In combat, Sithis is swung into me, and I end up taking one damage. The Ural player passes the turn. Riveteer's Overlook comes to my hand. I drop a swamp, and cast three visits, grabbing me an Overgrown Tomb. I have it come to play untapped, taking 2 damage, and then cast a Mana Gorger Hydra. Moving to Lenore, and a forest comes into play. Hardened Scales is cast, and Mana Gorger Hydra triggers for the first time, gaining a 1-1 counter. Mono Skellion is then cast, and it also triggers the Hydra. The artifact creature comes into play with 2 counters on it, and then gains 2 more thanks to the Aspirant. When Grace's turn, it has a forest into play. Steve comes down, and my Hydra gains a counter as it does. Willow's Cobra follows the Elder down. The turn moves to Ural, and a mountain comes into play for them. Rancor hits the stack, and Ural continues drawing and gaining life. They move to attacks, and Sithis is sent into the Windgrace player. They don't block, and Ural responds by casting Hunter's Insight on their attacking creature. The Windgrace player takes three, and the Ural player draws three cards. Back to me, and I draw Rada, Heart of Keld. I drop the Riveteer's Overlook, and it's sacked for a mountain. I cast Painful Truths with three colors, and draw three cards, and lose three life. I then cast the Trailblazer's Boots, and decide to pass. A Strip Mine enters the field for Lenore. They cast their commander, and then move to combat. Aspirant and Lenore both trigger at combat, and the Monoskeleton gains four new shiny counters, and the player draws a card. They pass with no attacks. Two Wing Grace, and the Elder is sacked for a forest. Cobra generates a mana from a landfall trigger, and then Ghost Quarter is played, generating another mana for the player. Ghost Quarter is then activated and sacrificed, destroying their own forest and getting yet another forest into play. Cobra gives up another mana, and Lord Wingrace hits the field thanks to that mana. Blasphemous Act is then cast, and the board is wiped of its creatures. Afterward, Wingrace is activated to discard a card and draw a card, and the player passes the turn. Back to Ural, and Enlightened Tutor is cast on their upkeep. Mana Crypt comes down, and they fall that with Silvering. They drop a Plains, and then cast Mirari's Wake. Wheel of Fortune then hits the stack, and I lose my hand and draw a not quite as nice one. It rolls to my turn, and I draw a Whip of Erebos. I play Spire Garden, and then cast my commander, Mr. Orfeo. I enchant the creature with Rancor, and pass with mana up for Evolution Charm. Woodland Foothills comes down for the Lenore player, and is cracked for a savanna. They then cast three visits, grabbing a Temple Garden. At this point, the Ural player quits the game for an unknown reason. The Lenore player has a Temple come into play untapped, taking two, and then casting Cumation Druid. 
Wildwood Scourge falls it down, and they pass. When Grace begins their turn with a Colon Ritual, wiping most of the non-land permanents except for Orpheo, and they gain 5 mana as Rancor returns to my hand. They then cast their own 3 visits, and grab a Bayou. The Saga Binding of the Old Gods hits the field, and Mr. Orpheo returns to the command zone. A Swamp enters, and when Grace casts the guy's blessing, putting 3 cards from their graveyard back into their deck, and drawing a card. They finish the turn by activating their Planeswalker to discard a card, drawing 1. At the end of the turn though, I cast Evolution Charm to bring back the Sepulchral Primordial. To me, and I draw Farst. I cast the Primordial and grab a Bane of Progress and Vorniclex from my opponent's graveyards. When the Bane enters, the Binding of the Old Gods gets destroyed, and the Bane gets two counters thanks to Vorniclex. I cast my Rancor on the Primordial afterward and move to combat. I swing with the Hasty Praetor into the Windgrace Planeswalker, and the Planeswalker goes down to 3 loyalty, and I pass. Lenore's turn has a Snow Forest come into play. Branching Evolution hits the table, and it's followed by Sterling Grove. Back over to Windgrace, and their walker is immediately activated to discard a card and draw a card, going up to 4 loyalty. The player casts their own Painful Truths, and lose the 3 life and draw the 3 cards. They cast Oracle of Maldaya, revealing a Woodland Cemetery on the top. They play it, and the following Rootbound Crag. Farseek is cast, and they ground the stomping ground they shuffled in earlier with Gaia's Blessing, and they pass the turn. My turn gives me another forest. I play it, and cast the Molten Primordial, taking the Oracle until the end of the turn, and more importantly, win Grace's Blogger. I see a Beast Within on top, and move to combat. I swing the Bane of Progress at the win Grace Planeswalker, and the rest of my creatures at the player. Damage is good, and the Planeswalker goes down, and the player drops to 13. In the second main, I drop another forest thanks to the oracle, and pass the turn. At the end of the turn, Sterling Grove is cracked by the Lenore player to tutor up a greater good, and Oracle of Maldaya goes back to the Windgrace player. Inventor's Fair hits the field for Lenore, and my interest is piqued. They cast Triskelion, and my interest turns into concern about combos. It rolls to Windgrace, and they drop a Dragon Skull Summit to the table. They cast Blasphemous Act, and Triskelion is activated in response. The Wing Grace player takes 3, and I take 1 from those activations, and then the field is wiped, with Rancor returning to my hand. Wing Grace then casts Karth the Lion, revealing a Garak Apex Predator from the top 7 guards. Tevish Thot, the Dim Ephilus, then hits the field, and is activated to make 2 Thrall tokens. On my turn, I draw a Beast Within off the top, I drop a Forest, and cast the Whip of Erebos. Once in play, I activate the Whip to bring back my Sepulchral Primordial. When it hits the field, I recur at Vorniclex and Bane of Progress again. The Bane enters, destroying my Whip of Erebos and Branching Evolution, and gaining 4 counters. I cast Rancor, enchanting Vorniclex, and move to combat. I assign both Vorniclex and the Primordial at the Windgrace player, and they intercept the Primordial with Karth. Karth dies, and the Windgrace player takes 8, dropping to 3. The Primordial gets exiled afterward, and I pass. Lenore casts Greater Good on their turn, and pass. Two Windgrace and Tevish is activated, sacrificing a creature for some draw. Nissa, who shakes the world, enters the field, and she is followed by Garrick, Apex Predator. Garrick is activated to create a 3 3 Death Touch Beast token, and Nissa is then activated to make a land that becomes an elemental with 3 1 encounters. Lord Windgrace then returns to the battlefield and is activated with the player discarding a card and drawing a card. Not finding an answer they need to subdue my onslaught on the next turn, though, they surrender. I lose the Vorinclex, but gain back my Rancor. Back to me, and I draw a Shamanic Revelation. I play a Forest, and then cast my Commander. Going to attacks, the Bane is assigned to my opponent, doubling its power thanks to Mr. Orvio. I swing for 16 total, and drop them to 21. In the second main, I cast Beast Within to destroy the Greater Good, trying to limit any card draw they will have, and pass. To Lenore, and they recast their Commander. They move to combat, and Lenore gains a counter, and they pass. Before the turn ends though, I crack my Ghost Quarter to break their Karn's Bastion. My turn sees a Rhythm of the Wild dance to my hand. I cast it and move to attacks. I swing the Bane at my opponent again, doubling its power with Orpheo. My opponent intercepts it with the Beast Token, and I trample over for 13, and they drop to 8. In the second main, I cast Shamanic Revelation, gaining 4 life, going to 38, and drawing 2 cards. With said new cards, I cast Find of Find and Finality, and bring back to my hand Rada and Molten Primordial. I pass afterward, hoping to close out the game soon. Lenore's turn has Command Tower hit the field. They cast a Brilliant Restoration to return all of their artifacts and enchantments to play, and there is a clear shift in momentum. At the beginning of combat, Lenore gives a counter to the Triskelion, and they pass the turn. I gain Rampant Growth on my turn, which really isn't too helpful at the moment. 
and consider my options, and then decide to cast Molten Primordial to force a play off Triskelion, and to try to avoid any possible combos. When the Primordial enters, I target the Triskelion for the steal, and the Lenore player activates it four times to kill my commander, who returns to the command zone. They then sacrifice the Triskelion to greater good, drawing four cards and discarding three. I cast Rada, Heart of Keld next, and give her a counter with Riot. I move to combat and swing the Primordial and the Bane at my opponent. They respond by making a Pentavite token and then sacking said token to put more counters on their new Pentavis. It becomes an 8-8. The player intercepts the Primordial with the Monoskelion and the Bane with Lenore. Both blockers die in combat and I trample over for 3, dropping my opponent to 5. Back to Lenore and they cast a Fractal Harness. It gets equipped to the Pentavis and they proceed to combat. It swings, doubling its counters thanks to the harness, and becomes a 26-26 after other effects on the board are added in. I jump with Rada, and she hits the bin. My turn brings a noxious Gearhulk to my hand. I move to cast it, but the Lenore player responds with Tefri's protection. Eh, well crap. They phase out of existence, being protected from my onslaught, and once the noxious Gearhulk is in play, I choose not to kill any of my creatures for the life. I then cast Rampant Growth, grabbing a mountain, and putting it into play tapped. I pass the turn. Lenore's turn sees them phase back into existence, and they begin their turn by cracking the Sterling Grove to tutor up a doubling season. Things are not looking that good. They cast a Mana Crypt, and then sack the Pentavis to the greater good to draw 26 cards and discard 3. Mirari's Wake then comes down, doubling their mana, and then they cast Wrath of God. The field is wiped as my momentum falters, but I still have Rhythm of the Wild for haste on my commander. Rancor again returns to my hand, and Reflecting Pool comes down for the Lenore player. Reclamation Sage comes down, and I no longer have a Rhythm of the Wild as they ruin my groove. The Ozolith then makes an appearance on the board, followed by Arcane Signet. They pass the turn, discarding 12 cards. My turn reveals an Undergrowth Stadium. I drop it, and recast my commander. I enchant them with the Rancor, and pass. Back to Lenore, and their turn begins with an Adventure's Fair and Mana Crypt Triggers. They lose the flip and take 3, but gain 1 life from the fair, going to 3 total. Doubling Season hits the field, followed by Peer, Imaginative Rascal, who is a great combo piece with Triskelion. Conclave Mentor then comes down, and Lenore is recast. Mana Vault then hits the field, and they move to combat. The Conclave Mentor gains a counter from Lenore, which becomes 15 additional counters, and they pass, leaving the Mentor as a 1919. My turn brings about Goreclaw. Unwilling to risk any attacks into Lenore, I cast Riskar's Expertise to draw four cards. Uh, unfortunately for me, I whiff with three lands being of those four cards, and I'm basically out of gas. I cast Goreclaw for free to resolve the Expertise. I then drop Bajuka Bog, exiling my opponent's graveyard, and then cast Fires of Yavi Maya. It moves to Lenore's turn, and they stack their triggers from the Mana Vault, Mana Crypt, and Inventor's Fair. In response to these, they sacrifice their mentor to the greater good, gaining 19 life, drawing 19 cards, and discarding 3, and the Ozolith gains those 19 counters. They also gain 1 life from the fair, and lose the crypt flipped, taking 3 damage. Castle Arden Veil hits the field, lots of mana is then tapped, and Soul Ring comes down. The rest of the mana is sunk into a very large walking Bastila, and it comes into play as a 41-41. Fractal Harness gets equipped to it, and Lightning Greaves then comes down, and also gets equipped to it. They move to combat, and Pyr gains the Ozolith's counters, and Lenore puts more counters on Pyr. They swing with their huge creatures at me, and the Fractal Harness doubles the counters, and then some, on the Ballista. I jump block both, but it is in vain. Ballista is activated in response to ping me to death, and I lose the game. Good game to my opponents. That was a Lenore deck I haven't seen before, so quite entertaining. Though I am not a fan of doubling effects myself. Speaking of though, Orpheo has his own doubling effects to utilize. Or one anyway. It seems somewhat hard to utilize this effect unless you're going to build the deck kind of like Tron adjacent and or bring other effects like Obosh or Engrath's Marauders to double down again and one shot people. Not the most flashy commander, but Mr. Orpheo gets the job done. Thank you for tuning in for another casual commander game here on Dirtle Magic. Until next time, stay safe out there.